obviously we're back to this AI question we can't escape ourselves from in this moment. But how do you think uh, we prepare ourselves for these kind of quantum leaps that we, we see and can forecast? Like I think regardless of AI's ability to execute today, I think it's probably pretty fair to assume that it's going to be a game changer. Uh, in the long term, we're going to have AI integrated into into our future tech stacks. So what are you thinking that folks should be doing to prepare themselves? Kind of a follow on to, to my last question as well. And it's funny you mentioned about those transitional moments because um, I haven't watched all the Star Trek series, but I am like, I think the next generation was like my intro point to, the, to Star Trek. And then I watched Discovery and then I watched Deep Space Nine, um, which I really loved. And then Deep Space Nine ended and I sort of felt a vacuum of like, what am I going to do? And I'd never watched the original series and I kind of started. And I just, I haven't actually been able to fully, fully get into it yet. But just the other day I started watching uh, Enterprise, which I haven't seen before. And it's funny because it sort of covers this transitional moment. Like it's about the first Enterprise, like where, you know, I think they're like, we're going to go at like warp 4.5 or something. And that was like a big <laughs> thing for the, the non-Trekkies in the audience. Like, you know, later ships are like at warp 9. So this is like a very early thing and and you know one of the first real interstellar spaceships for that society and um and, and so it was kind of cool seeing you know them grapple with uh coming out of their infancy as a star faring civilization and moving into you know taking a a seat at the grown-up table with all of the other um you know cultures that are out there the vulcans and the and the klingons um and so maybe we're, I mean, we're, that is a much more monumental kind of shift than what we're going through, even with AI. But there could be something similar. I think we're probably grossly unprepared as a society and will, you know, continue to be. Um, and I think as individuals, we can probably prepare ourselves. But ultimately, you know, all of the technology is a reflection of the, the people who use it and collectively the society who use it. And we can see that with all the, the tech that we have that can, like, do good that can do harm to people to places um so I, I suppose this is a kind of dour and pessimistic answer to your question yeah. john but I, I sort of think like you know as an individual i guess i want um in the i, I did an episode on ai just a solo episode and, and it kind of ended it with this like comparison of how this technology is used in star trek and how it's used in wally -E. and like in star trek where you know it's a tool it enables people you know, they're like, computer, give me a diagram. Like, so they're using the AI, but they're still, the human is very much like just solving the problem. The computer is just taking them to the next level as a thinker. And I really love that. And then there's WALL-E where, you know, you're like an adult baby sitting in your floating hover chair and the AI is just keeping you in this state of, you know, um, inactivity and mindlessness. And I can see us getting, I, that's what worries me a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the like, GPT, write me a blog post about X, Y, Z and create all the socials and just do all my work for me that we stop thinking we're going to we're going to lose that. So I suppose there's a certain vigilance that I personally am maintaining that I hope other people maintain about like, let's not get lazy. And I think market forces will, to a certain extent, be self-correcting there because I don't think those things will work very well if they start working well. Like if, if you can finish your novel with AI, yeah. like, that actually kind of scares me, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and just from my own experience, it's not finishing the novel for me, but prompting me through the most difficult bits, the, the parts that I got stuck on. You know, it just jumped in my mind as you're speaking. The idea, the paradox that we have in our society for almost all technology is our ability to use technology is almost completely abstract from our ability to understand it. And I think mm -hmm. like this, you could, don't have to be a decent writer or understand the concept of storytelling to go to GPT, follow some influencers prompt and create like Phil and I've been joking about this prompt I found on LinkedIn and it's, I don't know. It reads like a lot of LinkedIn posts. It reads pretty decent. It's still GPT boilerplate, but I think that ultimately just to, to wrap it up, like it's up to us, right? Human beings are getting to choose how we adopt this technology and put this out into market. And I think individuals like us actually have a role to play in how do we apply this technology and, and move it forward. And evangelizing the, I mean, that's to the extent that, you know, anyone is listening to me, that's what I'm trying to do as well. Like, here's how I think it's a good way to use it. Here's, here's what I do. Mm -hmm. I love the, the Star Trek Wally -E comparison that is admittedly not a, a big Trekkie myself. Like I think the, 
it's just overwhelming like all the ways you can get into it and start watching it and i, I tried but but got stuck but i am a, a huge wally fan it is it's one of my all-time favorite movies and yeah i i think about it a lot for for ai and and who's who's gonna be our our future wally to to save future lazy generations from being able to like problem solve and and not dehumanize uh, a, a lot of like our, our problems there